In the near future, the economic situation has struggled to the point that only 20% of the citizens are employed and the rest of the population are rotting in poverty. Eventually the government decides to build a wall in the middle of the city, so now the jobless live outside of it in an area known as the zone, and the actives live in the prosperous city behind the wall. A strict army of guards protects this wall 24-7. 30 years after the wall was built, the situation in the zone includes a large number of untreated diseases and a lack of safe drinkable water. In the zone, Noah is going around checking sleeping people for clean water and tries to steal from a girl. When she reacts, Noah's mother Izya appears from behind with a knife and makes her drop the bottle. Suddenly a huge announcement appears on the screens of the wall saying that the government will be offering jobs for everyone soon, but the zoners have trouble believing it. Meanwhile in the city, Reuben and his wife Ties are getting ready to go to work at Aquaville, the only water company. Their daughter Mayel is getting dressed in different clothes than the rules indicate, so Reuben has to scold her not to get fined. He also reminds her to practice her exercises more often because she's mute and she's already seen as an outcast, so she must work hard to succeed. When they arrive at the office, they learn that Minister of Labor Monroe is finally being freed after a year of being a hostage because they've reached a deal with the rebels that kidnapped him. For the first time in a decade, Prime Minister Nadia visits the zone to give a very fake speech about equality and inform them what the deal is about. The rebels will release her husband Monroe and in exchange, 10,000 zoners will be given jobs in the city under the Solidarity Job Program. The zoners are very happy to hear the news, but the actives are worried and wary because they have a negative perception of poor people. After the announcement is over, Minister Monroe is released by the rebels and the guards take him to reunite with Nadia, who asks him in a whisper to announce he was treated well. Monroe tells everyone he's fine but once he leaves with Nadia in their car, it's revealed he's missing two fingers. He's surprised that Nadia accepted the deal because she hates zoners, but she had to because Monroe's kidnapping caused an international scandal and the World Bank would stop lending them money if they kept ignoring the situation. At home, Monroe is given new fingers, and his daughter Zoe tells him he will answer questions later because right now his stress will distort his answers. Meanwhile, Noah goes to class with Mr. Robinson, who worries that some of his students may be drinking too much cytoscut, an illegal substance some addicts use to replace the lack of water. Robinson teaches them the origins of the current system and says people shouldn't have to work in order to exist and be someone. Noah thinks that work equals freedom and mentions his father who won the lottery 13 years ago and now is living happily in South Europe. After class Noah sees Volley stealing things from the school kitchen, but she runs away by escaping through the window. At the wall, the zoners are being interviewed to see who gets to join the program. If anyone looks sick because they drank contaminated water, they're instantly kicked out of the line. Izya is interviewed together with two other women, but one of them is kicked out because she stinks of anxiety. They're asked pretty intense questions about their background, and since there's only one spot left, Izya lies and tells them the other girl is an addict, so she gets the job. Before they're able to enter the city, they're given a code tattoo on their wrists. At Aquaville, Ties is making mistakes in her work, which has earned her six warnings already. This only stresses her out more. At the same time, Reuben is shocked to bump into the dead body of his director, who has worked himself to death. However instead of mourning, Reuben immediately calls his father Silas, who is a higher up in the company, and says he wants to run for the position. Silas is pretty sick and can't afford proper treatment, but his son doesn't know this. So when Reuben says he wants a better position, Silas immediately wants to help so Reuben can support him when he can't work anymore. Later, Ties meets with Hans, a co-worker she's having an affair with. They've been conspiring to steal important business data from Aquaville, which they plan to sell and use the money to leave the country. However Ties hasn't been able to get close enough to Silas even if she's family. At that moment a guard finds them and tries to take them away, but Hans quickly knocks him out and Ties returns to her station, only to continue to make mistakes. She fears that at this rate she'll end up in the zone. In the meantime, head of security Jean interrogates Monroe. He explains the awful situation he was in and mentions the torture, but he assures her that he hasn't told the rebels any state secrets. Afterward, Nadia tells Monroe to get back to work, assigning him breaks so he can get treatment. Monroe promises he can do this, but Zoe is worried it's too soon and that it won't be good for his health. While Monroe gives a speech full of propaganda, Reuben and Ties have an argument. Reuben wants the new position because he's desperate to send Mael to Phoenix Academy, which accepts autistic children, but Ties thinks it's naive of him to think Silas will help in any way. She also says that Mel will never succeed and that they should have abandoned her, which is heard by the kid. Mael runs to her room to find comfort in her talking doll, and Reuben runs to comfort her too. He also gives her a taser just in case. In the zone, Jeff tells his wife Lizbeth that he was chosen, but she doesn't take it well, saying it's suspicious and that she doesn't want him to go. Jeff gets her to soften up with a kiss. Later, Reuben meets with Silas, who informs he's been cleaning his son's profile. He informs Reuben that he's gotten him an invitation to an exclusive ministerial party and that he should announce he'll be running for director then, so it'll be important for him to present a good family image. Meanwhile Hans meets with Jean and it's revealed they're secretly working with the rebels from the zone. 
they want to find dirt on Aquaville because it's Nadia's biggest financial supporter, so they agree Ties will steal the information from Silas' office tomorrow to meet with the rebels later. Afterward Hans is taken through a secret tunnel so he can meet with Boris and stay with the rebels. The next day, the guards take hundreds of zoners on a bus into the city and tell them they can only be at their workplace, they aren't allowed to wander around the city. Izya is assigned to Ruben's house, but Ties closes the door on her face. Ruben brings her in and tells her to tidy up Mael's toys but not to interact with her. Mael doesn't want to let go of her doll, and Izya feels bad when Ruben takes it by force. There's a box that Izya doesn't know how to open and goes to ask Mael, who is taking her medicine. Mael almost tases her, but with soft words Izya gets her to help. Then Izya puts away the toys but hides the doll under the blankets. When the special team comes to pick up the toys, they spit on Izya, claiming zoners are stealing their jobs. Meanwhile Jeff is sent to the government building, because Nadia thinks he'll be the perfect face for their propaganda. He appears on TV and says he's happy to be there and that the program is going well because the government is great. Afterward he isn't allowed to touch anything and he's kept in an area for zoners, but he still steals a perfume. At Aquaville, Ties tries to visit Silas to access his computer, but she's stopped by a guard because they're investigating Hans and she must testify. When Ruben comes home, Ties hasn't returned yet and she won't answer his calls. Desperate to look good at the party, Ruben points out that Izya looks a lot like his wife, so she'll replace her tonight. Izya accepts in fear of being fired, and Ruben lends her Ties clothes including a bracelet to hide her zoner number. At Nadia's house, the family learns that most actives think zoners are here to steal their jobs and that they refuse to touch them. There have also been 22 cases of aggression against zoners. However Nadia says everyone will have to adapt for the sake of public relations. At the party, Izya is very nervous, but luckily wives aren't expected to say much and the higher-ups get a good impression. Ruben makes her dance with him, but Izya can't take it anymore and leaves. As she goes down the corridor, she discovers that the other children are making fun of Mael for being mute, causing her to scream. Suddenly Silas shows up and takes her away. When the family reunites, Silas reveals he knows Ties has been replaced and scolds Ruben for his weak family. When the zoners go home, Lizbeth thanks Jeff for the perfume with some naughty action. Izya shows Noah the money she's made and they hide in a secret box with their savings. Meanwhile Ties is finally freed and goes to meet with Hans, only to find Jean instead. She explains that she failed her mission and when Jean gets too pushy, Ties becomes anxious and demands to see Hans, so Jean knocks her out and takes her to the zone so Boris can hide her too. The next day, Ruben realizes Ties is gone for good and asks Izya to replace his wife at work, he even teaches her how to use the system. At first Izya refuses, but she changes her mind when she realizes she can ask for much more money, which Ruben accepts to pay. At the office, Ruben is accepted as one of the candidates for the director position. Izya is nervous and makes a few mistakes at the computer, but her fear of getting caught helps her concentrate and she begins to work well. At lunch, she has trouble with the food box, but she opens it after seeing a co-worker that talks about all the people that have died this year in the company. Because she doesn't eat fast enough, her food is taken away when the lunch break ends and she must return to the computer. Meanwhile Jeff meets with Nadia and her family, and he's given the position of Monroe's special advisor. They want him to help make the program a success and defuse the current tension in the city, so they quickly put him on TV. Monroe is nice in front of the cameras, but when they're left alone, he snaps at Jeff and almost chokes him, only to be interrupted by Zoe. Later over dinner, Zoe tries to tell Nadia how bad Monroe's mental health is, but Nadia tells her to shut up or she'll fire her. In the zone, Noah is helping Robinson with some old newspapers and finds an article about the lottery winner that makes him realize Izya has been lying about his father. Upset, he wanders around and is tripped by Vali, who notices his mood and invites him to have cytoscut with her. However the substance makes Noah sick. In the rebels hideout, Hans goes to check on Ties and confesses he's been using her to get access to Silas because he believes in Zoner's rights. Ties thinks Zoners deserve to be here so Hans leaves her in the cell. Afterward, Ties is given two bottles of water, and she must guess which one wasn't poisoned. Later in the afternoon, Izya is taken by a guard because an employee identified her as a friend of Hans, who is still being investigated. Luckily Jean is there and uses her power to free her, misdirecting the attention toward other women. When Izya leaves work, Jean follows her to know what's going on and immediately calls Boris to tell him of the replacement. They agree they'll try to get Izya to help them too. Once Izya gets home, she notices Noah is missing and starts looking for him everywhere, only to bump into Boris. It's revealed he's Noah's father and he abandoned the family to become a rebel. He asks Izya for her help, but she refuses to get involved. Moments later, Izya learns that Noah is at Robinson's home, and the teacher manages to make a broth that helps Noah throw out the cytoscut to feel better. Afterward, Izya tells Robinson that she's replacing ties and that she'll use the money to leave the zone with Noah. Then Izya goes home only to discover the rebel stole her savings. Meanwhile Ruben is called urgently to check on Silas, who hasn't been feeling well. He finally learns about his illness and is devastated to learn his father doesn't believe in him, he's just using him. The next morning, it's revealed that Monroe takes a lot of medicine to be able to function. 
Over breakfast, Nadia informs him his owner has killed his employer and they have to keep it under wraps. At the rebel's hideout, Ai's eye has no choice but to accept to help to get back her money and they tell her she'll receive a chip to insert in Silas computer later. Hans learns that Tyz hasn't drank water in the two days and accuses the rebels of torture, but his concerns are ignored. Afterward he checks on Tyz and secretly gives her some water, but after seeing her condition, Hans decides to kill her to put her out of her misery. At Aquaville, an employee bumps into his ya and then she finds the chip in her hand. Ruben is put through a serious interview full of trick questions to make him prove he's normal. Then he's asked to fire a friend of his to prove his personal feelings don't come before his loyalty to the company. During lunch break, Izya tries to get into Silas' office, but she bumps into the CEO Bartholome. He drags her into his office and takes advantage of her in exchange for promoting Ruben. In the meantime, Jeff is called to Nadia's office because there are zoners wandering around and playing soccer. Jeff explains they aren't escaping, they just finished their jobs and are killing time, but the ministers find this unacceptable and Jeff is sent with Monroe to stop them gently. Once there, Jeff tries to explain calmly to the zoners that they'll be fired if they don't return to their employers, but the zoners kick the ball to hit Monroe through the car window and start calling Jeff a snitcher. At that moment an alarm rings and the zoners run away while Jeff returns to the car and finds Monroe gone. When Jeff returns home and tells Lisbeth about his day, they have a fight because Lisbeth thinks he's on the wrong side. In the zone, Noah begins hanging out a lot with Vali, and they decide to sneak into the city through a secret tunnel. However as soon as they get to the streets, they're seen by the police, who open fire on them. Vali rushes back to the tunnel, but Noah ends up wandering around the city. He makes it to Ruben's house to look for his mother, and Mael holds him at Taser Point. Outside, Ruben and Izya arrive in the car and Izya tells him what happened with Bartholome. However Ruben isn't surprised and says it's common for wives to do this so their husbands can succeed. When they enter the house, they find Noah at the same time the TV shows an alert over a zoner infiltration. Ruben feels bad for Izya and agrees to drive her and Noah to the wall. On the way there, they're stopped by the guards, but Reuben says he's taking his servant home and that Noah is his daughter. After dropping Noah at the tunnel, Reuben apologizes for everything and explains he's desperate for the promotion because of his daughter's situation, which makes his Yah understand him better. When the duo gets home, Noah accuses his Yah of selling her body to Reuben, and his Yah slaps him before asking what's wrong. Noah confronts her about the lie and his Yah explains how Boris abandoned them because of his activism, but Noah is still angry with her. The next day, Monroe suddenly appears on TV without having Nadia's approval first. He rants against the zoners and mute kids, saying that an invasion is inevitable. In the zone, Hans gets a call from Jean, who tells him that they need to act soon before Monroe's speech gets the program in trouble. Hans meets with the leader Saul, who turns out to be Robinson, and they start to make plans for an invasion. However they'll need the intel from Izya first. Afterward Monroe is taken to a psychologist and kept under watch 24-7, while Nadia asks her father Passeron for advice. He used to be a prime minister too and is responsible for the wall, thinking it was the only solution to keep order. Then Nadia learns from Zoe that Monroe's speech made many people fire or kill their zoners, there's now chaos in the city. Nadia tells her to make an announcement saying Monroe was speaking based on false information and any person that fires their zoner will be punished. At Aquaville, Ruben goes to see one of his opponents and finds him dead in his office. Meanwhile during lunch, Izya is approached by Moi, another one of Ruben's opponents. Moi asks Izya to marry her so they can defeat Ruben together, but Izya refuses. When her sleeve accidentally slips back, Moi notices her zoner mark. Izya immediately calls Ruben and warns him, so Ruben rushes to the parking lot to confront Moi. She doesn't want to keep his secret, so Ruben ends up beating her up and killing her. Then he calls Silas, who quickly takes care of the body. Later Ruben sees on the security cameras that the special team is trying to take the doll from Mael and rushes out of work. Mael bites the guy and hides in her room, so the man has no choice but to leave without the now broken doll. Soon Izya arrives and comforts Mael, showing her how to fix the doll with some thread. By the time Ruben arrives, there's a guard at the door, but when they go inside Izya has already changed and the guard leaves without issues. Then Ruben breaks down and confesses he killed Moi, so Izya comforts him and they end up doing the naughty. Meanwhile Nadia asks Jeff to make a video showing how much his life has changed for the better thanks to the program and to include Lisbeth in it. Knowing his wife won't help, Jeff goes home and hides a camera on the shelves. He also brings good food and a nice dress for Lisbeth, then convinces her to dance with him. They have a nice dinner together until Noah arrives and accuses Izya of doing nasty things with her employer, which looks bad on camera. In the evening, Nadia discovers lots of citizens gathering outside the government building in protest of the program. After sending guards to get rid of them, she tries to talk to Monroe, but he's cold and distant. The next day, Jeff discovers people in the zone hate him too and insult him on the streets. Izya learns that Noah has been staying with Vali and goes looking for him, but he refuses to go home. At the government offices, Jeff arrives late because the haters beat him up. While his heavily edited video is played on TV, Jeff is sent to the makeup department to hide his wounds for an important meeting. Monroe comes by and paints Jeff like a clown to insult him, 
but Zoe quickly takes him away. Afterward, Nadia introduces Jeff and other members of the program to the president of the World Bank, and Jeff offers a heartful speech. The president is impressed, but in private he tells Nadia he can't lend her the money as long as Monroe keeps causing trouble. Without hesitation, Nadia later appears on TV and announces Monroe has been fired. At Aquaville, Ruben and the last candidate hold a meeting with the higher-ups. They're informed Moi has disappeared so Ruben accuses his opponent of killing her, using the story Silas got for him as an alibi and even presenting fake information against the other man to win. Meanwhile Izya manages to sneak into Silas' office and puts the chip on his computer. At that moment Silas arrives and Izya runs to hide, but Silas finds her anyway. He grabs her by the neck and threatens her, but suddenly he starts feeling sick, so Izya gets to run and grab the chip with the information on her way out. Silas calls Ruben and he rushes to confront Izya and slaps her, causing her to drop the chip. Izya swears she was forced to do this and that she isn't a rebel, blaming Ruben for putting her in this position so he just takes her away. In the zone, Noah and Vali go to the rebel hideout and ask about his father, but because no one knows Boris' old name, nobody knows what they're talking about and kicks them out. The teens pretend to leave, but on their way out, they get away from the guard and take a dark tunnel to sneak inside the building. Then they eavesdrop on the conversation of the activists and Noah learns that his teacher is the leader. Sometime later, Nadia goes to see Monroe, explaining she had no choice but to fire him to get the money from the bank, which has been approved now. An angry Monroe then reveals that he lied to Jean and that he actually did tell the rebels all their secrets. It turns out that Aquaville has been polluting the water in the zone on purpose with Monroe's blessing to make a profit by selling clean water. The activists just need proof to attack, and that's the file Izya is supposed to get. Nadia discusses this with Zoe and they get an idea. Meanwhile Jeff goes home and tells Lisbeth they've been given the chance to live permanently in the city. However Lisbeth refuses and an argument ensues during which is revealed Lisbeth used to be an activist too. In the end, he moves to the city alone, and in his new apartment, the first thing he does is have a shower to enjoy the clean water. Outside in the city, activist pamphlets are starting to appear on the streets. At Ruben's home, Izya overhears him talking to Silas, who thinks his son should kill Izya, but Ruben defends her. Then he volunteers to take Izya to the wall, and Silas uses the chance to make a call. During the ride, Ruben offers Izya to become his wife permanently, but she refuses, so Ruben arranges to make it look like she was fired instead. When Izya crosses the wall, Silas' men capture her and she's humiliated to make her talk. Izya tells them about the chip she lost, and Silas thinks he can use her to capture the rebels. He sends Izya to the meeting spot where she was supposed to drop the chip, and when Jean shows up, Silas' men arrest her. Izya tries to run away but she gets captured again. In the city, Ruben has to destroy the doll to make Mael leave the room. He takes her to the special academy so she can take the test, but she refuses to do anything. Instead she breaks the tablet and runs away. Ruben goes after her and yells at her, but it's pointless. Back to Jeff, he finishes recording a new speech and goes look for Monroe to show him, only to find the minister dead in the pool. At that moment Zoe shows up and kills Jeff with a shot, which is part of the plan. Nadia appears on TV saying Jeff killed Monroe and he was shot by the guards when he tried to escape. Then she goes on a rant against the zoners, saying they've become too dangerous and that's why she's suspending the program. She also announces a mass raid to catch the rebels. In the zone, a furious Lisbeth throws stones at the screen. Meanwhile Izya is locked up with Jean, who has been burned and tortured for information. Silas tells Bartholome of what he's discovered and after delivering the news to Nadia, Bartholome informs Silas that Ruben was chosen for the director position. In the rebels' headquarters, Hans insists on rescuing the Izya and Jean but Saul refuses, saying he can't destroy the activist network just for them. Noah and Vali overhear the conversation and they are disgusted to learn that the rebels are as bad as the people they are opposing, so they leave. At Aquaville, Ruben is given the director's office and Bartholome informs him that he's arranged things so Mael is accepted at the academy. Afterward, an employee stops by and gives him a little trinket, saying his wife must have dropped it earlier. Ruben takes a closer look and discovers the chip, so he connects it to his computer and finally finds out about the poisoned water. Disgusted by this, Ruben anonymously uploads the information online, which is seen by the government and the rebels. Soon Nadia appears on TV saying the information is all fake, but everyone in the zone responds by stoning the screen. Ruben goes home to take Mael, telling her they'll find Izya and escape together. When they cross the wall, they're attacked by Vali, but they let him go when he says he wants to see Izya. Noah explains what happened and suddenly they hear a bomb outside, so Ruben tells the teens to hide with Mael while he goes to rescue Izya, taking Vali's taser with him. Moments later, the rebels finally launch an invasion from multiple fronts and Nadia's defense plans aren't enough because it's not only zoners, many people from the city have left their jobs and are supporting the cause as well. Saul wants to take over the TV first, but Boris takes Hans and a few others to attack the guards and demand information about Izya. Meanwhile Ruben corners Silas at the office and hits him until Silas agrees to take him to Izya. 
On their way out, they're seen by another employee right before the TV announces Ruben is a wanted man because the IT team tracked the leak to his computer. Soon they're surrounded by armed guards, so Ruben is arrested and locked up with his ya. In just a few hours, the wall finally comes down and thousands of zoners enter the city. A bomb explodes near Zoe's car and the guards have to evacuate her. Near the wall, the teens and Mayel are scared of all the violence and run to hide in an empty apartment. Noah has a wound on his shoulder and Mayel decides they should make a blood pact, promising to stick together until the end. At the minister's residence, Zoe finds her mother on the roof watching the fall of the wall and blames her for everything. Zoe refuses to leave the city and swears she will testify against Nadia to see her fall as well. In the meantime, the guards get orders to kill the prisoners. Ruben is immediately shot, but before Izya is hurt too, Boris shows up and kills the guard first. Then the rebels take Izya and Ruben to safety. At the same time, Saul and his men find Nadia, and they kill her behind closed doors. Afterward Zoe approaches Saul and offers his experience to help him manage the country. Three days pass and the TV announces that Nadia self-deleted, marking the beginning of a new era. Hans is devastated to discover Jean died and tells his men to identify all the bodies because he doesn't want any brave warrior to die anonymously. Lisbeth uses the new holes on the wall to go to the city and get Jeff's ashes, wanting to honor him. Ruben recovers in hospital and Mayel looks over him while Izya reunites with Noah. Boris comes by to check on them and Izya forces him to confess the truth to Noah, but things are just awkward between them. When Ruben is feeling better, Izya tells him she accepts to be his wife. Noah likes the idea and invites Vali to come with them, but she turns him down. Later at a press conference, Saul finally announces the end of the old system and the beginning of a new equal one. Afterward, he goes to see Passerone, who hasn't been well since Nadia's death. It's then revealed that Saul is Passerone's son and he was thrown out of the city because he didn't approve of his father's system. Saul promises to give Passerone the best doctor so he can live and suffer under the new system like the zoners did under his. To Passerone's shock, Nadia suddenly shows up alive and well, thanks to having accepted to work with her brother.